so we are talking about uh, moment area theorem and took a simple beam problem can deliver beam with some tip load and maximum deflection and slope we have calculated and try to compare our values uh, with those obtained by your direct integration of the differential equation. And you must have that feeling that it is much more easier compared to the earlier approach. So, it is not a very general statement for that problem it might be easier I think. So, it depends problem to problem um, you have to choose the method in a appropriate manner. Sometimes the other method may be much more easier or convenient to get the solution. Now, I will take another problem of a cantilever type of beam because the values are quite important here I think. Right. So, length is L and again it is E i. Here there is a moment acting at the end. So, this moment is a m. Okay. Now, for that beam, you can draw the bending moment diagram. So, it is m throughout the beam bending moment will be m or if we divide by E i we will get the m by E i diagram on the beam right. Now, if I draw the deflected shape of the cantilever So, here there is one advantage uh, this point is fixed. So, tangent at that point is the initial line. So, that we have already mentioned. So, at the free end if we draw a tangent, so both the tangent will have a difference in slope that will be theta and incidentally that value will be the actual slope of the point at the free end. So, it is what? It is basically area of that curve. So, it is L, it is m by i, it will be simply m L by i and delta is from this point if we move in a direction perpendicular to the original line it is meeting the tangent drawn at that point here. So, that is delta. So, we are moving along this line. So, about this point we have to take the first moment of area of this m by i diagram. So, it will be ranging from here to here moment about that. So, area already we have written m l by e i and its centroid will be at the midpoint. So, that will be l by 2. So, it will be m l square by 2 e i. Right. Now, these values are quite significant values. Like the case of a cantilever subjected to a load at the free end, we have written P L square divided by 2 E i or P L cube divided by 3 E i. Similarly, if there is a moment, it will be M L by E i or M L square by 2 E i for deflection and slope. Now, cantilever type of problem it is very easier to handle because one of the end is fixed 
and there we can draw the tangent and that will be identical to the initial line. So, at any point if we draw tangent difference be between the slope of this tangent and this second tangent is basically the actual slope of that point okay. deflection also directly we are getting in a similar manner. Okay. But if we take a simply supported case problem is little different. Now, how we will handle a case of a simply supported type of problem. Now, it will undergo some deformation like this. Okay, it may be some loading. Now, if we are interested to find the slope at the supported end or deflection at the middle of the span or some intermediate point, uh, just like cantilever we cannot get it. But here uh, more or less we follow that type of procedure about this point support if we draw a tangent it will go like this. Now, here to here we can calculate say what we are doing this is the deflected line and from this deflected line this is a typical point on the elastic curve from this point we are moving along a path normal to the initial line and it is meeting the tangent drawn at that point. So, here to here it is basically it may have some m by e i diagram over it. So, we have to take the m by e i diagram from here to here about this point you have to take the moment that will give this value. Well, so, if the area is this one and it has a centroid the distance is this. So, this area multiplied by the centroidal distance from the right end that will give the value of this. Okay. And once that is there that divided by L will be the slope here. So, we can say if this is your some value delta. So, delta is your area of m by i diagram. from A to B, say it is A, it is B. So, that multiplied by say x bar. So, x bar will be this would be x bar. Say we say it is x bar B. So, x bar B is centroid of the m by i diagram from your point b and that will be the delta according to our second part of the moment area theorem. Now, if delta is there say theta a, so theta a will be straight away delta by l, l is the length of the total beam. Now, at some intermediate point if we want to find out the deflection it can be uh, calculated like this a theta a we can calculate. Similarly, that side we can draw a line and this, this side we can find out something that divided by l will be theta b. So, end rotation we can find out. say at some point intermediate point here we want to get the deflection this deflection we are interested in. right now this is a point so from this point we can move vertically downward perpendicular to the initial line 
so it will meet the tangent drawn on A, so this part is basically about this point you have to calculate the first moment of area of this diagram, so M by A diagram here to here about this point if you calculate the first moment of area we will get this part and this slope into that length you will get the full part this theta into this one will be the total length so total length minus this length will be the actual deflection okay so uh, if we are interested to find out deflection at a distance of x so this will be the actual deflection so actual deflection that will be your theta a into x theta a into x will be the here to here theta a into x minus this part you have to put there so that you will get the actual deflection so here to here it will be the actual deflection so it will be minus your area of m by ei diagram between a and say it is c r k this point is c distance is x into say here uh, it will have some centroid and that centroid that distance there might be something say c bar so it will be c bar so that part is only the small part and this part is the total component so if you make it minus the effective value what you are interested at any point you can find out okay so moment area theorem in cantilever form we have tried to explain in a simply supported condition how we will get deflection at some intermediate point it may be mid span or some other point you can calculate in this manner but initially you have to find out the slope at the two end at so you have to calculate some small delta in this form that divided by l will give the slope at the end so we get the initial slope from there if you follow that procedure deflection at any point you can find out so i have already mentioned you it is not the only method there are different methods you have to apply your method according to the type of problem right now we can take one example and try to utilize some of the standard values to get the deformation of a structure um, So the beam is like this A B C at A there is one support simple support B another simple support C is free. So free and there is a load P A to B it is fully loaded with some uniformly distributed load intensity is omega 
AB length say it is defined as L1, BC it is defined as L2. Uh, for simplicity entire beam having a identical cross section EI, right. Now for that beam uh, we are interested to find out the deformed shape or the deflected shape of the beam. Now here uh, beam is a statically determinant beam because you can find out the support reaction. Here there are uh, there are uh, two components of reaction because it is hinge, one is vertical and another horizontal, here one vertical and horizontal part will be 0 because the external loads are all 0. So there are two quantities, two quantities you can find out summation of moment, summation of vertical forces. Now that part is basically our first job work. So we can say there will be a reaction it is R x A that will be 0 and here R y A that we have to find out and here R y B that also we have to find out. Now this is a problem where straight away you cannot say R y A will be this R y B will be something like this. Okay. Now uh, you can take moment about A of all the forces. So it is moment about A due to all the forces, summation it will be 0. So A means both the forces will cancel. So from here we can say R Y B into your L1 minus P into L1 plus L2 that will be equal to 0. So R Y B will be P L1 L2 divided by L1. Right. So P the uniform load. uniform load that part we have not taken okay. so it will be the additional part right. So here uh, it, uh, that part also we have to consider so we cannot write here 0 so that additional part will be uh, minus L1 square divided by 2 that will be equal to 0 right. So, R Y B it will be P L1 plus L2 plus omega L1 square by 2 divided by L1. Right. So, if that is the value, um, summation of R Y A and R Y B will be equal to the total force. So, from there also we can bring or you can take another moment about B here, whatever you like. So, I think if we take moment about B, we will get the another force. So, here this will be 0, automatically it is 0. So, here it will be R Y A into your L1 minus omega L1 square by 2 plus P into L2 that will be equal to 0. Say R Y A if it is clockwise P is also clockwise. So, both are positive this is negative. So, from here R Y A we can write uh, omega L1 square by 2 minus P L2 divided by L1. Now the reactions we have determined or evaluated in the form of your L1, L2, omega and P. 
Now, it depends which method we will apply. Uh, in some cases, it is necessary you have to find out these reactions. In some cases, it may not be necessary, but how it can be determined that we have shown up. Now, here uh, there are two loads, one is P, another is omega. Right, omega is acting from here to here, fully distributed uh, for this entire span, and these two loads are acting on the entire structure, and we want to find out the deformation of that. Now, once the reactions are available due to this p and omega, we can find out the expression for this span expression for the bending moment for this span, because r y a into x omega x square by 2 will be the bending moment here. Here also you can find out the expression for the bending moment, right. And uh, you can apply your differential equation technique. So, there will be one segment, another segment. Uh, load is started means you have to apply throughout, then you have to add something this range one equation, another equation, step function, then two constant, you have to put boundary condition. So, if you start from there, you are basically try to solve the problem from your basic equations. You need not remember anything, start from your initial equations. Or other option is some of the standard parameters already you have uh, derived. And those values, if it is in our mind, so we can utilize that and try to solve, get the solution of the problem. So, that is utilizing some of the known parameters or some known informations. Now, here there is a technique called method of superposition. Method of superposition, the method of superposition is. Uh, the effect of this and effect of that, it can be combined here, because our analysis is a linear type of analysis. So, we are assuming stress is proportional to strain. So, stress strain relationship is following in a linear manner and our deformations are very small. So, whole problem is a linear problem. So, if it linear problem means load and deflection relationship will follow a linear curve. So, if the load is 100, say only this load is acting, whatever slope we will get, if we make the load 200 instead of 100, slope will be just double okay. right. Means 100 plus 100 effect will be just added, if it is 300 it will be 3 times. So, all the effect will be simply added with this. So, effect of W and effect of P, if we can study separately, put the uh, deformation we can simply superpose or simply algebraically add to get the to total effect. The reason is load deflection curve is linear, right. So, this is called your method of superposition. So, method of superposition is valid for a linear system and the type of problem we are handling it is a linear problem. So, if we have a number of loads or system of loads, we can get the response of a load or a system of load and get the response of second load or a second system of load. If we combine or algebraically add both the responses, so it is the response of the structure when it is subjected to both system of load or both the loader. So, that is one of the principle we say it is principle of superposition, sometimes method of superposition that we normally uh, apply here. Now, we have started with this problem. Now, we will take the effect of W in one step, second step we will take the effect of P and we will combine to get the total effect of 
of P as well as W when they will act in a simultaneous way. Okay. Now, let us take the first case, so it is only W. So, this is the actual problem that can be splitted into two formati, one with a load, another with a distributed load. So, response of that plus response of that will be the response of this structure. So, that we are trying to define as a principle of superposition or method of superposition. So, we will utilize that to find out the separate uh, effect and combine. Now, if we take this W, what will be the type of deformation? So, here to here it is a simply supported beam under distributed load and this side there is no load. So, it will be a deformation like this and we have that information already we have solved that problem. Okay. And this part will be, it will just follow that line. Okay. There will be no bending of this member. So, here to here it is a simply supported case with full load. We have the idea what will be the maximum deflection and what will be the slope here. Okay. And here also it will be the same slope and there is no bending. So, this slope will be continued. There will be no deformation of this member. Okay straight. Okay. So, this information we have already in the form of maximum deflection and maximum slope. So, slope into that L 2 will be the deflection here and slope here. Okay. Now, this part, this part there is a simply supported portion without any load and there is a part extending beyond the support and there is a load here. Okay. Right. Now, this load we can shift from here to here. So, it will come as a force and a moment. So, if I shift the load, so it, its equivalent part will be P into P into L 2 is a moment. So, instead of putting the load we can shift the load here as P plus a moment. Right. Now, this P will be consumed by the support because it is on the support and this moment is a moment act acting at the end of a simply supported beam. So, it will, it will be a simply supported beam problem with some moment. Right. Now, this problem if we just redefine or if we draw the deform shape so due to this uh, P and the moment P L 2. So, P it will not contribute anything because it will be just consumed by the supporter key. only this moment part. So, there is a moment means it will try to rotate like this. Okay. So, this P if I shift here P into moment, P will not do anything only the moment part will give a slope here okay. right and this part will be simply extended. Okay. Now, I have done only one violation, the P part we have shifted from here to here. Okay. Now, regarding this part, you can put the load here or here with a moment is same thing. 
because it is a carrier okay. If we just cut here, so it will be a portion there is a P and a reaction will be P and there is a moment and that basically we are taking it here okay. And due to this part there will be a additional deformation as a cantilever. Okay. So, there is a load about this point there will be a bending like a cantilever. If I cut here we will get a reaction and a moment. So, this extended part is just like a cantilever. So, it will have a cantilever type of deformation, but this is not fixed. So, whole thing is rotating say a cantilever support is there support is yielding. So, there will be a normal deformation of the beam plus the support will yield. So, whole thing will be yielded by certain extent. So, that part is basically the yielding of this part. Okay. Is it clear this part? But isn't that portion fixed into the horizontal? The one with the rollers, uh -huh. that part is also held from top. Uh -huh. so why should the so second part bend? This part? No, so second part. Left part. Uh -huh. Why will that bend? Because it is just simply supported, it is not fixed. So, this is a continuous member, it is just supported. It is resting on the top. Yeah, it is just resting at the two points. So, if you if you try to put the load automatically there will be a bending of that. Okay. So, right part if we consider separately. So, here I have drawn a key. So, there is a load P. So, if we cut here to balance that load there will be a P and there will be a moment M. So, if we cut that part as a reaction there will be a force here. This is upward this will be downward and that will be the so, this part I have basically drawn here okay. or uh, you can think this part is strong part it is rigid. What will happen? There is a load this part will be rigid one. So, this load will be simply shifted P into this one this part will undergo deformation or this part is rigid. So, this part will not deform under this load this part will be only bent. So, when it is rigid this part will deform this is this part when this is rigid this part will be this one. So, both the part are flexible, it is not rigid this part or that part. So, if you combine you will get a combined deformed shape of the structure. Right. Now, all these informations are known, most of the informations. So, this one already uh, we have calculated. If you go through your earlier note, you will get a beam with a fully distributed load, what will be the slope? Oh, it is already there in your note okay. or I can supply the value from here actually. Okay. Uh, it is beam fully loaded, it will be omega L q divided by 24 E i. So, this is the same slope. So, what will be this deflection? Omega. So, your slope is omega L q means L here is L 1 q divided by 24 e i right. That will be the slope into L 2 that will be the deflection. If we are interested for finding out the deflection only, we can find out slope or other parameter in some other place. Now, here this slope, this slope or if, if I draw a tangent, this slope will be how much? So, it is a simply supported beam. If we apply moment at one end, this is one of the standard value. So, here the value is given, uh, this is m l by 3 e i. So, it is what is m? m is your p l 2 uh, into your l 1 3 e i right. 
so it is P uh, m L by 3 i. So, m here is P into L 2 and here L is L 1 divided by 3 i. So, here to here this value will be P L 2 L 1 divided by 3 e i multiplied by L 2 means another L 2 will come out here. Follow. And this part it is just a cantilever type of case there is a load P. So, it will be P L 2 uh, divided by 3 e i right. P L Q by 3 e i. So, L is L, L 2 this 3 e i and this part is this theta into L 2 and this part is theta into L 2. Uh, the idea is uh, we have some information and we try to explore all those uh, standard values in different places. Right. Now, in a similar manner, uh, we can take some other problem and take the different loads separately and uh, try to utilize the standard values and get the effect for say displacement. We have tried to find out say uh, if we are interested for slope at that end. So, slope at that end is same slope and here slope is this slope plus here there will be some slope that we can calculate it will be P L 2 square divided by 2 E i. So, in that manner we can get the information about the slope go on adding we will get the final reflection uh, final slope. It may be at the free end, it may be at this point, it may be here, it may be central deflection or some other parameter. So, uh, we have tried to show you with some simple simple problem and try to find out some standard values. Those values can be utilized in this manner to carry out a practical type of problem with some complex support and load system. Now, we can take up some numerical example in our tutorial class and go ahead with uh, different type of situations to have a better understanding how we can tackle different type of uh, situations case to case. I think with that we can conclude now for this. A young nation aspiring to find ways to fulfill a dream lays the foundation of an institution that will give aspiring technocrats the license to fly high. The first Indian Institute of Technology is born at Kharagpur. Founded on the basis of the recommendations of the NR Sarkar committee that was set up in 1945 to consider the development of higher technical institutions in India, the institute was first established in 5 Esplanade East, Kolkata, before it moved to Kharagpur in 1951. With Sir Gyan Chandra Ghosh as the first director and Dr. B.C. Roy as one of its founding guardians, the institute established itself as the symbol of a young, dynamic and resurgent nation. 
as top students rub shoulders with the most celebrated of professors and scholars, visions took shape. And IIT Kharagpur continued to play the pioneering role that was envisaged for it, enabling India to become a knowledge powerhouse that it is today. At every stage of its evolution, IIT Kharagpur remained ahead of its times. It provided the best of facilities for the budding technologists, helping them shape their own as well as the nation's future. Indeed, today IIT Kharagpur has blossomed into a time-tested, venerable institute of learning with the rich experience of converting individuals into brilliant professionals through 50 glorious years. As you cross the campus gate, you feel the distinct nip that is IIT Kharagpur. The spirit of objective inquiry and lateral thinking hangs heavy in the air. The modern township-like campus of IIT Kharagpur, set in sylvan surroundings, is self-sufficient in all respects. From modern banks to the good old post office, from vast playgrounds and well-equipped gyms to modern auditoria and open-air theatres, and from the quiet fibre-optic-linked residential quarters for the faculty, to the web-enabled hostel rooms for the students. At IIT Kharagpur, lush green bowers of tranquility coexist with smart cards and ATMs. Spread over 690 hectares of sprawling cyber habitat, 120 kilometers from Kolkata, IIT Kharagpur is one of the largest network campuses in Asia. Just the academic complexes itself spreads over a built-up area of about 2 million square feet, of which 150,000 square feet is the new complex that commemorates the Golden Jubilee celebrations. And that's not all. It is the only IIT to have conquered territory beyond its own through cutting-edge courses offered in its extension campuses at Kolkata and Bhubaneswar. IIT Kharagpur is not just about its large campus, but its diverse range of activities. It offers the widest spectrum of disciplines, ranging from aerospace, biotechnology, cryogenics, to architecture, mining and agricultural engineering, supported by strong faculties of sciences, humanities and management. There are more than 30 departments and centers that offer the largest number of undergraduate and postgraduate courses amongst the IITs. The courses are ever-evolving and show the way for other sister institutions. The richness in its diverse activities is showcased by the technological support the institution provides in areas like architecture, agriculture, post-harvest technology and medical sciences. The institute has revolutionized and popularized rice milling technology. The other major contributions of IIT Kharagpur have been in the critical fields of defense, railways, space research, power systems and petrochemicals. All these activities directly empower the human requirements of the nation.
Advanced facilities at the Institute make it possible to undertake cutting-edge research and service-sponsored research projects. The array of equipment ranges from aerodynamic testing laboratories to intelligent machining centers, atomic spectrometers, to VLSI design labs, molecular beam epitaxy, to anechoic chamber, fast protein liquid chromatographs to liquid nitrogen plants. The cutting-edge technologies are at par with the best research facilities across the globe. In fact, the volume of research and development activities at the Institute is incredible. In terms of the number of patents it owns, the volume of industrial consultancy it provides and the revenue that it earns from all these make IIT Kharagpur a class apart and strengthens its position as the true pioneer in technological education in India. The Institute Library deserves a special mention. Fully web-enabled, it is one of the largest in Asia with over 324,000 volumes of material, including books, videos, microfilm and patent documents. that ensure a student's mind develops at the right pace. With the most celebrated of professors and scholars, visions took shape. And IIT Kharagpur continued to play the pioneering role that was envisaged for it, enabling India to become a knowledge powerhouse that it is today. At every stage of its evolution, IIT Kharagpur remained ahead of its times. It provided the best of facilities for the budding technologists, helping them shape their own as well as the nation's future. Indeed, today IIT Kharagpur has blossomed into a time-tested, venerable institute of learning with the rich experience of converting individuals into brilliant professionals through 50 glorious years. As you cross the campus gate, you feel the distinct nip that is IIT Kharagpur. The spirit of objective inquiry and lateral thinking hangs heavy in the air. The modern township-like campus of IIT Kharagpur, set in sylvan surroundings, is self-sufficient in all respects. From modern banks to the good old post office, from vast playgrounds and well-equipped gyms to modern auditoria and open-air theatres, and from the quiet fibre optics. Along with its strong sense of academics, which is ensured by a strict selection process, life at Kharagpur is a celebration of, well, life. And at its heart are the students. In fact, the saying goes that you can take an IITN out of KGP, but not KGP out of an IITN. You've left a part of you behind. For most of the students, life in the campus was in itself a festivity, a collage of activities that shape their mind and body, a collage of events 
that was a synthesis of competition and cooperation. A collage of interests as diverse as dramatics and ham radio. Yes, life at Kharagpur has always been exciting. And the years cemented lifelong bonds as lives mingled over cups of joy and stretched over stimulating semesters. The halls with their blocks and wings connected by charming catwalks remain ensconced in their own world. A collage of memories. Infrastructurally adequate, architecturally meticulate and holistically inspiring. Where students, wherever they might be from, invariably come into their own, developing their individual talents, honing their skills to take on challenges with confidence so they can move ahead in fulfilling their dreams. What makes IIT Kharagpur so unique is its environment. Undiluted by the diversions of metropolitan surroundings, the close-knit campus life enhances the entrepreneurial and innovative spirit of the achievers-to-be. In an environment that is so stimulating, it is only natural that down the years, IIT Kharagpur has consistently produced well-rounded individuals. Many of them are celebrities in their own right. Holistic grooming has had a lot to do with this. So, no matter which walk of life they choose, the IIT KGPI stands tall. And so does the institution that bred him in majestic splendor. The alumni of this institute command global respect. Their distinguished presence at the helm of global giants is a matter of national pride. For the students of IIT Kharagpur, it is impossible to erase any scratch of memory about their alma mater. In fact, some come back to invest sentiment, pride and money. To see the institute they call home rise to even greater heights, structurally, functionally as well as holistically. Their singular aim is to make IIT Kharagpur an institute whichever way you look at it par excellence. A man's journey into quiet accomplishment and the Hall of Fame starts with the right step. And the training and placement cell of IIT has been the efficient facilitator in this regard for over 30,000 graduates. Having placed more than 95% of its students in a wide range of industries consistently for over two decades, it is no wonder that the institute is the most preferred campus for technical recruitment of quality manpower. With infrastructure like industrial power and communication facilities, in addition to its excellent research and consultancy facilities, STEP or Science and Technology Entrepreneurs Park aims to assist the budding entrepreneur into a successful adventure capitalist, guiding him right from the concept, institutional financing, production, leading up to the launch and marketing of the product. With its rich pool of talent and excellent infrastructure, it is no surprise that through the last three decades, IIT Kharagpur has developed strong liaison with the industry. 
SRIC, or Sponsored Research and Industrial Consultancy Cell, was formalized as the Special Industry Interaction Cell in 1982. Devoted full-time to handle industrial projects and consultancies and for deploying and propagating intellectual property. Successful sponsored research projects straddle a wide spectrum ranging from computers, communication and biotechnology to robotics, photonics and food processing. The setting up of a state-of-the-art VLSI CAD laboratory and tie-ups with GE in areas ranging from vehicle structure design to electrical communication and software technologies are excellent examples of IIT Kharagpur's ever-evolving pioneering spirit. Collaborations with a host of national and industrial majors are a testimony of its proven expertise and research repertoire. Jubilee year, as the celebration continues, Pandit Nehru would surely have been a proud man today. For him, IIT Kharagpur was always more than just an institute of technology. In his own immortal words, it is indeed a fine monument of modern India.